Hey folks, Mrs. White coming to you with section 6-9 today. Super exciting. This is the last new learning for the year. Okay, pretty darn exciting. This is the last new stuff we'll be covering. Um, when you folks log in on Thursday, you will have practice of all the different solving strategies we've learned in this chapter. And there's been a lot. Okay, so um, Thursday is going to focus on practicing solving across the board. And then Monday of the following week is going to be review for a test. And then when you're ready, you'll be taking that test and turning it in by June 4th, being that the last day of school is June 5th. So I can correct them and get them online for you. Pretty darn exciting. We are almost done the year. I'm psyched. Um, you folks have hung with remote learning this whole time. I'm super proud of you. Um, let's keep it up for the last two weeks. I know you can do it. Okay. So um, this is going to be our new learning. It's all of these pieces and parts. We're going to look at rational exponents again, review that a little bit, see how rational exponents can tie into solving logs. And then we're going to talk about the property of equality, which you guys actually have learned already, but we haven't put that name to it. Um, and you do have a worksheet. It's attached on Google Classroom. I want to start out today with a humongoid apology. Um, as I was kind of thinking about last Thursday's lesson and this homework assignment, right, because this is what you guys had to do for homework, um, I realized it was, it's too much. Um, I've tried to be really thoughtful with what I'm putting out to you folks, um, but I feel like that was a lot and probably a lot more than I should have given you. Um, so being that it's honors, I feel a little less guilty, but I do have a little guilt and I'm going to try to make it up by making a quick video today. And your homework assignment tonight is going to be nine problems instead of two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 problems. So it's going to be a little bit smaller, shorter video, trying to make up, um, for the long video and the long homework that I assigned you guys last class. Again, I'm sorry. Um, sometimes I just give you all this practice. I want you to get good at it. And I don't really think about how much time it might have taken in some of you. So I'm sorry. Um, feel free to look over your homework, correct it. If you didn't finish it, finish it now, submit it late. There's no late grade um, as far as remote learning is concerned. So get it in, feel good. If you didn't feel good about this before, maybe take a look at some of the problems um, and see if there's something you could fix. Um, we are going to be reviewing this stuff though. So be kind to yourself. All right. Let's hop right into the new stuff. Like I said, I'm going to try to have a short-ish video today. So let's take a look at the two ways that we're going to be looking at solving logarithms. We've already done a lot of simplifying and solving with logs, um, but there's a couple things, like a couple loose ends that the book hasn't covered that they end up touching upon in this section. And one of them is this. So if you are asked to solve a logarithm, I have asked you to draw a wall, simplify each side, and then make a decision. Okay, so let's see. This side, is there any logs that have the same bases that are being added or subtracted? No, so I can't simplify that. Is there a coefficient here that I can make an exponent? No, can't simplify that. This logarithm, as it is right now, is in simplest form. I come to the other side. There's no simplifying a constant. Okay, so this is in simplified form. There's nothing I can do to simplify um, this problem any further than it already is. So if it's already simplified and I'm asked to solve it, what do I do next? Okay, and this is one of the trickiest parts of this chapter is what do I do next when I feel like I can't do anything else? And my advice to you has been take a look at what your problem looks like. Is it a log equals another log? If it is, if they have the same basis, they just cancel out. And that was the property of equality. I didn't actually call it the property of equality, but they're touching on it again in this chapter. So the next ones are going to be kind of nice. Um... Here, it's not a log equals another log. It's a log equals a constant. So I did give you some advice on how to handle that. If it's a log equals a constant, we should change the form from logarithmic to exponential form. Okay, so that's what we're going to do here. You have a log on one side that's simplified and a constant here. I'm going to make it 36 to the, whatever's on the other side of the equal sign, three halves, equals my of piece which is x. So this feels great, right? x equals some number, okay? x is already alone and positive. I don't have to do any rearranging. Now, the dilemma is with this hot mess right here, right? We've done some work with rational exponents in chapter 5. In fact, if you remember, the denominator of a fractional exponent becomes your index number. Now, we only dealt with what we call the principal root in chapter 5. 
Um, and that meant that this was a one here. Now, when there's a three or a four or any other number, that stays attached to your base. So if I were to rewrite this in its radical form, it would be the square root of 36 to the third. Now you might be like, okay, cool. So I can solve this and then square root it on my calculator. You totally could. 36 times itself three times, stick that number under the square root symbol and get it, okay? But I wanna point something else out to you. You don't have to use your calculator to do this. You can use what we did when we were solving exponential functions earlier, okay? Which is look at your base and rewrite it, if you can, with its own exponent. So let's kind of look at what I mean for this problem and how we can apply it here. And it's kind of um, a little bit more work than just plugging it into your calculator, but it also helps us understand how we can kind of cancel out this fraction. So if I think of 36 right off the top of my head, I'm like, oh, 36 is a perfect square, right? If I were to square root it, yeah, I would get six. So I could rewrite 36 as six squared. Would you agree? Hopefully you're saying yes. So I have six squared now raised to the three halves power. And this is what I want to happen because when I have a power to a power, I have to take these two things and I have to multiply them. Now, the reason why I said this is great is because I know two is the same thing as two over one. And that when I multiply fractions, I go across the top and across the bottom. So I would get six over two, which is three. I also notice that if I times by two and divide by two, those two things are gonna cancel and I'm gonna be left with three over one. So this is the exact same thing as six to the third power, which is very easy to solve for, right? It's just six times six times six, whoa, six. So I got 36 times six, which, oh my goodness, I don't know that off the top of my head. If I did, I would be really, really smart. Um, I know I have my calculator, but okay. So 36 times six equals 216, okay? So I still ended up having to use my calculator to do the six cubed, but this kind of gets at the heart of these fractional exponents and how to simplify them out. If you put it in radical form and it still isn't easy necessarily, what you could do is rewrite your base, okay? as some number raised to whatever that denominator is. If you can do that, then you can cancel out the denominator and leave the numerator. Now, we've done one where I've kind of talked you through it a little bit. Let's try it again, okay? So I'm gonna start by looking, I see it says solve, because remember, eventually all these problems are gonna be mixed in together. So I would draw a wall. Can I simplify this? No. Can I simplify this? No. So what I'm going to do is if I can't simplify it, I'm going to see, can I cancel logs on both sides? No, I'm going to rewrite it in exponential form. I take my base, which is nine, and make it my base. I'm going to raise it to the three halves again, and it's going to equal x. So x is alone and positive, which is awesome. I'm going to solve this now, okay? So to go about solving this, I'm going to see, can I rewrite nine? Okay, can I rewrite my base as something raised to the second power? So can I rewrite it as something squared so that when I raise it to the three halves, the twos will cancel and I'll have just a three. And hopefully you're saying to yourself, oh yeah, I know I can square root nine. The square root of nine is gonna be three. So three squared raised to the three halves, I could put that two over one, go across the top or across the bottom, or just remember that when I multiply by something I'm dividing by, they cancel. And I'm left with three to the third power, which is the same thing as three times three times three or 27. Boom. Now, one thing I didn't bring up here is that whatever we get for our solution here, if X is your of piece, remember your of piece has to be um, greater than or equal to zero, right? So it can't be negative. So as long as 27, and I look back at my original problem, okay, it's there, it's not gonna be negative, I'm good to go. Um, I got 216, that's my of piece, it's not negative, I'm good to go. So pause the video really quick if you'd like and give this problem um, just some of your concentration for a second. I'm actually going to talk through it starting in like two seconds. So pause it if you want to. All right. So hopefully you paused it or you didn't and you're just listening. So that's fine. Um, we draw our wall. Can we simplify? No. Can we simplify? No. Is it log equals log? No. So I'm going to rewrite it. 
16 to the 5 halves equals x. Now, x is alone and positive, that's great. I need to solve this. I notice that the denominator, again, is 2. So I'm going to ask myself, can I rewrite 16 as something squared? So that when I raise it to the 5 halves, the 2's cancel out. Okay? So, yes, 16 can be rewritten. It's going to be 4 squared. So then my squared and my divide by 2 cancel. And I'm left with 4 to the 5th power which is the same thing as 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. Whew, that's a lot. That's 16 times 16. Ooh, I should have just done 4 to the 5th on my calculator. Um, 16 times 4 I know is 64, so I have 16 times 64 right now. 16 times 64. 1,024. Now, if I look at that number and I plug it in for my x, it's still non-negative, so I'm in really good shape, okay? So that's one thing we hadn't really talked about is how would you handle a fractional exponent in this instance, and what you're going to want to try to do is rewrite your base with that power, the same power as the denominator, so that those two things cancel and you're able to simplify. And that's generally what you're going to see in this chapter are going to be things that can be rewritten and will work out nicely. Another thing that we're revisiting in this section is um, problems that look like this. So I would draw my wall. I don't know why I just erased that. It's asking me to solve. There is an equal sign. I'm going to look at this side. I'm going to ask myself, is there anything I can simplify here? So are there logs being added or subtracted? No. Is there a coefficient that I can make a power here? No. There's nothing I can do on this side. I ask the same questions to the other side. There's nothing I can simplify here. Okay. So at this point, it's different than these first problems, right, where it was a log equals a constant. Now I have some log equals the exact same base, okay? If that happens, hopefully you're like, oh yeah, Mrs. White, you're just talking and I already know, these two things can cancel out. That's the property of equality when it comes to logarithms. Um, if you have logs with the same base on both sides, you can cancel them right out. So then we're left with x squared minus 4. And I don't have to have it in parentheses anymore, okay, because there's nothing going on, right? There's no power that I had to put here or anything. Equals 3x. So I'm noticing right now that this is a quadratic, right? So I should get everything on the same side, set it equal to 0, and solve. So I'm going to minus 3x minus 3x. I'm just going to write it in standard form, which means that I'm doing highest to lowest power. And I'm going to set it equal to 0. Now hopefully you're like, oh my gosh, we're going to factor it. We've done so much factoring since um, chapter three, right? We've done so, so much. We have used it a lot. So hopefully you're pretty good at it now. We're going to ask ourselves what multiplies to be A times C. So it multiplies to be negative four and adds to be our B value, which again is negative three. So if they multiply to be a negative, one is negative and one's positive. If they add to be a negative, our negative number must be bigger. So what multiplies to be negative 4 but adds to be negative 3? Hopefully you're thinking negative 4 and 1, right? Those two things add to be negative 3. Now we're going to look back at our original equation. I'm psyched because my a value is 1, which means I can put it right in a factored form. If a was not 1, then I would have to expand it into 4 chunks, group, GCF, and then put it into factored form. But I'm lucky. I can just go x minus 4 x plus 1 equals 0, equals 0 to both, and then I get my two solutions. x could equal plus 4 plus 4. x could equal minus 1 minus 1. Now, just like I said in these problems, right, we have to check our answer answers each and every time. Both of these could work, okay, but there's potential that they won't. So we're going to take the 4 and we're going to plug it in. 4 squared is 16. 16 minus 4 Okay, so right now I have log base 2. 16 minus 4 is going to be 12. Okay, now I'm going to take this 4 and plug it in over here. 3 times 4 is 12. I get log base 2 equals 12. I'm feeling really good because clearly this side does equal this side, so it works. But also my of pieces are both positive. So this definitely works. It's definitely a solution. Now I'm going to check my other solution and make sure that that works also. Okay. So I'm going to plug in x equals negative 1. So negative 1 squared is positive 1. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So right now, okay, I have log base 2 of negative 3. I automatically know that this isn't going to work. 
even if I continue to go, negative one times three here is going to be negative three. You're like, Mrs. White, how does it not work? Those two things are equal. And I totally agree with you. This side does equal this side, but it is impossible to have a negative of piece. So regardless if it creates an equivalent situation, it doesn't matter. This can't exist. So my answer is only going to be x equals 4. Now I want to remind you that this could have worked. This could have worked. You could have two solutions here. You could have one solution. You could have that neither of them work when you plug it back in and you get a no solution. Okay, I want to remind you that those are all possibilities when we're dealing with a quadratic. Two, one, or none are all possibilities. So I'm done. X equals four. Uh, this is the last one that we're going to do together before you guys start your homework. I told you it would be short, so pause the video if you want to. I'm just going to go through um, and talk you through solving it right now. So I'm going to draw my wall. I ask myself, can I simplify this side? No, there's nothing to simplify over here. Can I simplify this side? And again, the answer is no, there's nothing I can simplify over here. So I'm going to look, it is log equals log, which is great, which means I can use my property of equality and cancel out my two logs with the same bases. And I'm just left with x squared minus 15 equals 2x. I love when this happens. I feel like it's so much easier than if it's log equals a constant, right? Then I don't have to rewrite it. I just cancel it out and then I'm ready to solve. I'm going to minus 2x to each side and write it in standard form, highest to lowest power. I'm going to check for factoring now. So what multiplies to be a, which is 1, times c. So what multiplies to be negative 15 and adds to be negative 2. That's going to be negative 5 and positive 3. Again, I'm going a little quicker because I'm just kind of going over this. Hopefully you tried it on your own. Because my a is 1, I'm able to put it right into factored form. Remember, these are not my answers. Okay, I need to set each of those equal to 0 to get to my answers. Then I would add 5, add 5. I get x equals 5. I would minus 3, minus 3, and get x equals negative 3. So I'll plug each of these in. 5 squared is 25. 25 minus 15 is 10. So I have log base 3 of 10 equals 5. 2 times 5 is 10. Log base 3 of 10, they match. 5 works. I'll plug in negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 15, mm -mm, negative 6. Can't have a negative of. I know I don't even have to keep going that that's not going to work. So my answer is 5. Again, and I'm going to repeat myself because you're going to see it on the homework slash classwork slash whatever you want to call this next piece, okay, that sometimes both answers will work, sometimes only one will work, sometimes neither of them will work, okay? So let's take a look at the practice that I want you to do today. These are the only two things you're really going to be practicing. Um, attached to the classroom, I have this sheet right here. Um, you can put your name on it. That would be great. Um, there are nine problems you are going to solve. As you solve it, you're going to find the corresponding answer down here. These are all the answers. There are also extra answers. There are 12 letters and spaces here, but you're only going to need nine of them. So you can't just kind of wing it. There's some extra letters um, that you won't be using. So um, you're going to solve it. You're going to find your answer down here. Say the answer to number two is, I don't know, um, y. So I'm going to go to where number two is up here. I'm going to go down to, um, if I said the answer to two was y, I meant that the answer was nine. So I'm going to write y. So up here where it says two, I'm going to put the letter y. Okay. In fact, why don't we actually go about and solve two because we didn't do a problem that had the x as your base. All right, so let's take a look at this one really quick. Let's say we have log base x of 27 equals 3 halves. I'll draw my wall there. Can I simplify? Can I simplify? You're saying no, okay, which means that I don't really have to draw my wall there. Instead, I'm going to ask myself, can I cancel logs or do I need to rewrite it? And in this instance, I need to rewrite it. I'm going to take my base, which is x, and I'm going to raise it to the 3 halves, okay? equals 27. Now you might be like, oh man, like what do I do at this moment? Okay. Uh, because we haven't done one of these in this section, which is why we're going to do one now. And then you're going to do this one on your own. Okay. So for this problem, I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to say what number raised to the three halves equals 27. So this might be a little tricky for you. 
if you wanted to kind of conceptualize the three halves, which means think of it in a different way, you could say, all right, that means I'm going to take my x. The denominator means that I'm square rooting it. But I'm raising that x to some number. So some number raised to the third power and then square rooted is going to be 27. So what is that number? You could guess and check. There's a handful of strategies you could try for that. But I want you to think, again, of our properties. Okay? So I'm going to erase that out. What I want you to think of is how could I, I want to get my x alone and positive, right? So actually I should not have erased that chunk. So I want to cancel this out and I want to cancel this out. So how do I cancel out a square root? Just in general, how would I cancel out a square root? I would square it, right? So to cancel out that square root, I'm going to square and square, which means that I would square this side also, and it's going to cancel this denominator. Then, okay, I'm only left with this x to the third power. And I'm going to say to myself, all right, how would I cancel out a cube? Well, the opposite of raising something to the third power would be cube rooting it, right? So I would come over here and cube root it, or I would have a denominator of three, okay? And that would cancel out my cube here. So essentially, what I did is I multiplied this original fraction, which was three halves, by its reciprocal. And then what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And if that makes sense, great. Um, you're only going to have one more that you have to practice like that. And I'm not going to overwhelm you with that on your test too much, okay? Um, your test is going to be less than 20 questions. I'll give you more feedback about that um, when we do our practice next class and or the review the following Monday, okay? I honestly haven't written it yet. I'm going to be thoughtful about what I put on there. So now that I have my x alone and positive, and I have 27 to the 2 thirds, I'm going to look at my base. I'm going to ask myself, can I rewrite that 27 as something with a power of 3 so that it will cancel out this denominator, right? If I times by 3 and divide by 3, they'll cancel to something squared. And 27 is a perfect cube. It's 3 to the third power. Excuse me. So something to the third divided by 3 cancels, and I'm left with 3 squared which is the exact same thing as nine. So my answer for number two is gonna be nine. <laughs> it actually is y. So I'm gonna come all the way up to here. I'm gonna to go to where number two is right here and I'm gonna put the letter y. Now if two happened over here also, I would put the letter y there, okay? So as many times as it happens throughout this um, whole sentence, you would place it. Y will not happen again and nine will not happen again, okay? And that's how you're going to go through the rest of these eight problems. If you have any questions, feel free to swing by during office hours. I will be here one to two for you on the 27th. Okay, folks, um, talk to you later. Bye. Hey folks, I'm back. Um, I just did the key for this and I found that these problems, three and four, I thought they were ones that we had already done, but for whatever reason, they are not. So I must have missed a section um, in my previous video, so we'll just do one of these. Um, we'll look at number four and that will hopefully help you figure out number three. Number four is definitely harder. So um, in this problem, I'm going to start by rewriting it in exponential form. So it's going to be eight to the x equals one half. And we actually haven't done one like this before either, right, um, with x as your exponent. Now you have a couple choices here. You can start trying to use logic to figure out, okay, I want it to be a fraction, so this power is going to have to be negative, which would move my 8 below. That would give me 1 eighth, okay, if it was a negative x. But then I need the 8 to get smaller, so it would have to be a fraction so that I could root it. There's a lot of ways that you can kind of use logic to figure out that x and actually not need any math at all. Um, but another thing that you could do here and that I'm going to encourage you to do is um, to use something that we learned in a previous chapter. Okay, so right now see how x is already alone and positive? We can actually use our base uh, change form, okay, where we use our common log to solve it. If x is already alone and positive, we can put log of one half over log of eight Okay, and you should remember this hopefully from the homework we just did um, and actually get a value from that. So let's do that. Okay, so I'll open up my calculator. All right, so I'm going to do log of one half divided by log of eight. Remember, we can use our common log like this to figure it out. This is our, our um, 
base change form. So negative 0.33333. And hopefully you understand what that is as a fraction. It's negative, like we said. And then it's going to be one third. So our answer here is going to be negative one third. So if we look down at our answers, I'm pretty sure it is one of those answers down here. Oh, it's L. So I'm going to put L's in where four is. Okay. So if you already have your X alone and positive and there's no variable over here, you don't need to rewrite it. Okay. Use your base change form using the common log. Do your log of the of piece and your log of your base, okay, and divide those two in the correct order, and you're going to get that answer anyways. That would be my advice to you, okay? You could have used logic saying x would be negative because it's got to bring the 8 underneath, and then you would have to cube root the 8 to get to the 2, and we cube root by applying a 1 third. Um, if that works for you, great. Use that same idea here. If not, use the base change form, okay? Sorry about this. Um, hopefully you stayed and saw it, and now you have two of the nine problems done. Bye, folks.